hello, hello. <laughs> so, welcome. This, of course, is the counter press. Um, Fifi Manfred on YouTube. My name is Fifi Manfred. Um, like I always do, thank you very much for um, your constant support of the brand and the channel and what's not. I'm very good. It's a Sunday here in Ghana. I uh, had a quick mass this morning. Taking the Holy Communion. So you know what I'm going to tell you. Nothing but the truth. Only the truth. Um, sometimes it's fun to enjoy rival tears like Manchester United fans their tears. But again, um, for somebody who loves the tactical aspect of the game and is very, 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 very um, tries to constantly evolve when it comes to that. I, I, I like to say the record streets. And just before we go into that, do what you like and subscribe. Um, subscription is very important to me. We are growing, actually. And I'll say thank you again in that regard. Um, your support has been immense. So do all to, whilst you watch, do what to share. Um, put other people on. Um, let's subscribe. I'm trying to find a way where we can all benefit. And I think um, for the Panthers, we can work on a better note. And I, I want to do even better for you to win. So, yeah, do what like, subscribe, and share. Um, this is the counter press on Fifi Manfred. But really, the conversation for today is that Macy Mount is not the reason for Manchester United's failings. Against Wolves, he wasn't the reason. Against Toria Mospe, he wasn't the reason. Yes, he hasn't been the best Macy Mount version, but he's not the reason why Manchester United are failing. I've said it time and time again, that Macy Mount isn't a bad player entirely. There are, yes, aspects of his game that need huge development. But you can't tell me Macy Mount is a bad player. Somebody as versatile as he is in the final third, can play from the wing, can play centrally as an 8 or 10, and gives in a lot of work in terms of the off-the-ball press and leading it. You cannot tell me he is a bad player. I mean, he's a player that, yes, there's a lot more that Manchester United can get from him, but he's not a reason why. And I want us to go to it. Now, let's go to, let's start from the game against Wolves. In our game against Wolves, Manchester United played in a 4-3-3. In a mid-4-3 of Macy, Mount Bruno Fernandes and Casemiro. Now, I've said it several times. If you've been following me, I've done a video of Sofia Nama Rabat. And I've said that you need a register. You need a conductor in the middle of the park. You see, you can be direct and play, go, go um, bypass the first phase. Go straight to the third phase, bypass the second phase, go straight to the third phase, progress, and then try and attack. That is fine, that's okay. But really, sometimes in games like this, like the one they play against Wolves, the one they play against Story, I mean, that is high intensity. You need somebody to conduct, you need somebody to calm down the game, you need somebody to hold up play, you need somebody to 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 recycle the play, when to go quick, when to go fast, when to go sideways, when to go vertical. Very important, very, very, very important, and actually very important now if you don't have somebody like that then that's your first problem manchester united did a very good summer purchase by getting andre Unana. i've said it several times where in this modern game yes the short stopping ability is very important but you also need a player a goalkeeper that can sweep behind the back four that can also play out on the back very important now because manchester united don't have a conductor in the middle of the park progression has been a little a bit of an issue especially on the ball casimero used to play in that Madrid side that even against smaller teams can seed off possession and then catch you on the break. He just had to do the ball winning ability. Now in Manchester United, it isn't just the ball winning ability that it's supposed to be seen of him. He has to do a lot more on the ball and that is one, that's, that's not Casemiro's biggest attribute. So you can see that he's been found wanting. Teams did target him against Wolves. He was hugely targeted in the middle of the park by Nunes and Cunha. Constantly when the balls went to him, he was a trigger. Also, the build-up shape of Manchester United has been problematic. Then this is why I say this. First of all, you can have two centre-backs. Yes, they have issues. They, they are very good on the ball, but not the most athletic centre-back. But that's not an issue generally. But the bigger link, the weakest link of that full-back area is Aaron Wan-Bissaka, who is not exactly the best player you want in build-up. If you watch Chelsea against Liverpool, 
At some point in time, was a three at the back, was a four at the back at some point in time, where Levi Cole sometimes could drop into a full back area because Chelsea wanted that build up attribute of Levi Cole in that space, in that zone. Very important. The general phase of football are on and off the ball, with and without the ball. Now, much the United's biggest issues are when they are on the ball. And given how they want to play this season, when you are on the ball, you don't have the guys to manipulate the press, to manipulate the ball, manipulate time and space, then you are going to be in trouble. Erwan Bisaka on the ball is not your go-to man. So if you watch Wolves, and I'll try to put that annotation up here, most of the times when they're building up on the back, what Wolves did was that they overloaded the side where Luke Shaw was. And then allowed every time Aaron Wan Bissaka to be the free man. Once the ball got to Aaron Wan Bissaka, especially when it was a hard pass, it was a trigger for them to press. Constantly, they did that. One of the other big problems of Manchester United in all of this is the fact that sometimes when you have a ball playing goalkeeper, goalkeeper has, has a wonderful distributor and you have issues without a conductor, that is why you need a holder player. That's why you need a big bulky center forward that can hold up for you. I mean, not necessarily big bulky because a lot of the center forwards now who are short are even good holder players. Nicolas Jackson and Ketia, very, very good holder players. The ball sticks to them, the two feet players. Now, that's why you need that. Hodgeland came through to Manchester United. I hear he's injured. So, they cannot even vary build up. Once he's not going through um, the ground with the short passing that you want to do and building up from the back, you want to go route one and now route one the person to help with one isn't getting a job done so if you watch that game against Wolves again constantly Andre Onana was trying to find an outlet the outlet sometimes he tried to get it in Garnacho but they didn't they weren't able to isolate Garnacho to be able to him for him to be the outlet now if you look at yesterday if you watch Manchester City versus the Newcastle game constantly all the teams that are double faced so it's like it's like a two-factor authentication first of all at first, teams used to press you from the first line. They press once you go to go past their first line of press, then they drop into a mid block. Now teams don't do that again. When they press you for the first time, they bring another set of press. Usually you'll be able to go to the first press, but the second press is a big deal. What City now does is that they play an inside number 10, and I've, and I've tweeted about this. We're full folding inside. Then making teams think that they are going to play narrow. Once you defend narrow and keep your full backs, your, 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 your back line compact in that chain, they isolate their full back. So now their full back Kai Walker yesterday was playing sort of like of, of a winger, very high and wide. Then they use him as an outlet, go long to him. Obviously, a lot of the clubs will believe that yes, Erling Hala is going to be the outlet. Yes, but that's that's the very the the the, the diversity or the different dynamics they have in build up. They can go long to Erling Haaland, they can go to Carl Walker to go 1v1 and then cross. United doesn't have this. Um, has Messi Mount's performance been the best? No, he hasn't been good, he has been shambolic. But really, he's not United's problems. United's problems are there for everybody to see, build up their issues. In, in fact, pressing, there have been issues. Casimiro's on the ball ability um, has been there for everybody to see that he hasn't been good enough. And I remember last season when there were a lot of talk about Casimiro versus party, I kept on saying on the ball. Casimiro is nowhere close to party, nowhere close to party, but off the ball, party is not as party is not so bad. He's not he's not far off from Casimiro's off the ball ability because of his cognitive ability to be able to position and win those balls. And 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 there you have it. When the games get extra tactical, that's where sometimes these players tend to fail. So the onus is on Eric to have to try and find a conductor as soon as possible. You need a conductor as soon as possible in Manchester United. They need to get him. If you get a conductor, then you free up Messi Mount to get his job done. Also, that midfield trail balance is not working. It's not working because when you don't have a conductor, it's not working off the ball because um, I don't think that the tracking back of Bruno Fernandes is, is, is something that's been done well. So it's not working. If you look at a goal, uh, Tony Amos best scored against Manchester United, you blame Messi Mount really for that. He was next to Papi Matasa when Papi Matasa sends that ball out right to Dejan Kolasevsky. The ball was cut back. He was a lurking in the box. Didn't track the run of Papi Matasa. Of course, Papi Mata came in late, just right behind him. By the time he looked over his shoulders, Sahar smashed the ball into the back of the net. And this is what you get when you are forced to play from the back foot. 
and he has a disadvantage. Again, Manchester United's fullbacks don't are not the best in terms of um, the attacking traits of the game. Today, Aaron Wan Bissaka will not fit into any top six attacking side. Yes, they are. He has been improving and Watson's very good one v one defensive traits from outside. But then really, when teams even do combine against him, and and, and that's not just Wan Bissaka, a lot of defenders. When you overloaded, you can you don't have answers to it. You are probably have to be top 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 tier to be able to have answers to when you are overloaded, and that's what spares the team. Udoje and then Son constantly were overloading around Wan Bissaka in that zone. Now look at how Spurs played. They played with four midfielders, very aggressive on the ball, very solid, constantly wanted to win those balls. Dejan Kulaskevsi was playing from out wide in a 4-4-2 sometimes because they variated a lot from out wide. At some point in time, in the middle of the pack, it was constantly Yves Busilma and then Papi Matasan. Two players who put in a huge shift. That was a midfield three. But somebody can argue that there were times where Son also played out from the wing. So was the back four of uh, uh, um, Mark van der Ven and what's his name, Kuti Romero, Pedro Poro, Udoji in the middle of the pack, definitely you are going to have Yves Bissouma, Papi Matasa, then Son, um, Dejan Kolasevsky up top, you had Richarlison and then James Madison playing right behind him. Constantly they overloaded the Manchester United midfield. They had 4 v3, 5 v3. 2v1 constantly in the middle they overloading manchester united so if you have a team that's overloading you your midfield can't thrive now you need to change the dynamics that's midfield that has been constantly overloaded because they know that they don't have the, the the legs to even catch up when when they are being overloaded they are not the most aggressive it's going to be casimero against use bisoma papi matos and dejan kulasevsky three of them are as aggressive and combative as casimero now the wide area threat of Anthony <laughs> is there for everybody to see. He is not the guy. He is not the guy. Maybe he has food all of us, but he's not the guy. 1v1 is so not good. Can't take on players. He doesn't have that 1v1 threat. And he also has fullbacks who are not overlapping or underlapping. You are in trouble. Much the United's problem. It's not Macy Mount. It's not Macy Mount. Thank you. Let me see if you my friend. This is the counter press. <laughs> it's a it's if you want for the YouTube. Um, I'm grateful to have you here. Um, do want to like, subscribe, and share. We are watching the Chelsea game at 3:30. We'll bring you a post-match analysis of that. Turn on notification. Turn on notification. Put on all so that you constantly get the videos. Once I do, have a nice day. Take care. Bye.